Rick Buecher's now joining us. Bottom line is Steph, Clay, Wiggins, and Poole. Yeah. You can beat the Lakers. Last night it was Steph, Poole, no Wiggins, hit and miss Clay. Yeah. So I thought a lot of it was not just not stopping AD, which is going to be a problem in the series. Yep. So let's first start with Wiggins. Uh, just an outlier to you, or is a matchup bad? No, 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 no. I would expect that they're going to figure out a way to make him more impactful. I do think that in, at the end, when they were when they had that that push, uh, he was huge on the boards. He showed you what he was capable of with his athleticism because he got like three or four offensive boards on one possession. Kept kicking it out for threes, and they just couldn't hit that couldn't hit that shot that would that would turn it over. So. I would expect that he's going to be well, – he has to be. He has to be more impactful at both ends. But I would say especially defensively. I, 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 as this series goes on, while Kavon Looney had a lot of rebounds, I don't think you're going to see the, the, uh, the Kavon AD uh, matchup as much. You're going to see – you might see some Jonathan Kaminga. You're, you're going to see Wiggins. I thought Wiggins was very. Last night they got Jamichael Green out there. He just more size to shoot anything. Yeah, but and that was that that was the tell in seeing Jamichael Green. Steve Kerr was basically just looking at his hand and going, "What can I play here? Let me see what works as the series goes on." He said it afterward. It's very much. It was very much a feel out game. I believe that to be the truth. It felt a lot to me like Game One of the Kings series. They could have won it. They didn't play particularly well. They could have snuck out a win. If they had, I, I heard you earlier, I agree. I think it would have been a shorter series. But nothing really happened last night that changes my mind about the Warriors winning the series. The Lakers are what they are. And so they came in readily defined on how they want to play. The Warriors came in going, we played a completely different series. Let's and see what kind of works as we go along and I believe once they look at the tape they're going to find some defensive they're going to tweak their defensive matchups but that's what it's going to be it's going to be the creativity of Steve Kerr that I think pushes the Warriors through um Jordan Poole could have taken a dribble gotten a better shot it yeah. didn't bother me though <laughs> I thought he played pretty well yeah we always we always focus on like the last shot and to me, there were a lot of other things that they did that lost that game. It wasn't that last shot. That last shot could have stole it. There's a lot of other things that Jordan Poole did. There's a lot of other shots that he took that I take issue with. He just, he has to. I think that's who he is. He I, don't has think to, he can, I don't think he can grow up. I kind of. Do you I, think D'Angelo Russell has grown up? Not really. I thought he played well last night. I think D. Ross. There's a, there's a reason the Warriors got him out of town fast. There's a reason the Lakers moved off him. There's a reason. There's a reason the T Wolves did. I always categorize them as like bounce around the league guys. Yeah. They're talented, and teams are looking for like for instance the Lakers get D. Log, and their takeaway is we need some perimeter shooting. Yeah. Like Westbrook can't do it. So he gives them something, and last night did, that they didn't have. Yep. But they're not building around him. They're not extending sure, him. Sure, sure. The here for, the, for, for this year to give them some perimeter shooting. Austin Reeves, they're going to sign him. Right. Right? Like So I think, I think Jared Vanderbilt works for them now. Right. They needed twitchier wing athletes. He was good against Steph. So I think the Lakers, it, it, it was a brilliant trade deadline move. They got longer. They mm -hmm. got younger. Mm -hmm. They got twitchier. And they got better shooting. Right. So, but I don't look at, I mean, I just think, you know, this is years and years ago. My, my, my late father's, we had this discussion. And <laughs> this was a real bone of content. Can I go, I'll go deep on my family history. Please do. So my dad was a small town doctor. Mm -hmm. And this would, uh, so, so like if you needed glasses, you went to my dad in this entire county. Like we didn't, we had a, you know, like this was it. And I remember my sister and my dad were really close. And uh, she had a couple friends, and my dad was, they have very bad credit. They don't pay their bills. And she was like, yeah, but I like the kids. And he was like, that's fine. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I remember this battle. And I remember my dad saying, you know, you don't pay your bills at 24. You don't pay them at 34. You don't pay them at 44. Like, people kind of are what they are. Yeah. He goes, I've had my business for 40 years. The people that didn't pay their bills 20 years ago, they don't pay them now. Yeah. And, and I always, as a kid, I remember listening to this, and uh, my sister's, you know, barking at dad and, but I guess his point was, and I've seen this my entire life, you're kind of formed by like 25. You, you, no, I'm not saying you can't grow up. 
Mm. You know, you get married, you're a single guy, you get married. But when I watch pro athletes, the guys that are really mature, mm. like are really mature early. Mm. And the guys that Baker Mayfield and Manziel, this is kind of who they are. It's the chip on their shoulder. They're always going to be that guy. Russell Wilson could have been, I mean, literally Larry Fitzgerald. I had dinner the other night with an NFL GM. Mm-hmm. And he goes, Larry Fitzgerald could run a Fortune 500 company. He could run the league. He goes, he's been like that since he was like 12. Yeah. And so I guess my point on guys that bounce around sports or bounce around teams, they kind of they kind of are what they are. And if they can fit into your system briefly, yes. then 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 pay them and have a nice brief relationship. I agree with that, but I do believe that. What happens is that teams recognize who these guys are and they find the fit. Like, this is a really good fit for D'Lo. Yes, yes, they need him. They need him, and they're, but he's just playing a particular role. Like, we need some scoring, we need somebody to hit a three. Like, as soon as the defense becomes more uh, problematic than the scoring, He's off. That's right. Like, they, they don't play him if he's not providing that's, the thing that they need from yes, him, that's right? That's why he's a good fit for them. Right. And the problem with Jordan right now is that as a result of last year and as a result of getting paid, he's trying to do way too much. Yes, I agree. Like, at the times where, and again, this is where it's just the shot selection. He's a really good shooter. And... A wide open three? I mean, look, he was, what, six for ten going into that shot? Um, that, that's not the problem. It's the bad selections or when he's driving one on two and then yes. he's looking for a foul and he goes sliding out of bounds and now we got a 5-4 oh, the other he way. Also, he also disengages defensively. Like he doesn't know who his man is all the time. I also don't need you talking trash I, in not, the first yeah, half when it, you hit a – you banked so, in a so shot. So I guess it go, this goes back to my – the very beginning yeah. is I think you have to, and try to, instead of trying to change people, yeah. LeBron James walked into this league and by year three or four, he was a fully formed man. He was a businessman. He was a basketball player. He was a husband. And it's like, so you've always known what you could bank on with LeBron. Now I'm not saying hmm. the Miami loss didn't make him more self-aware of what he could do and couldn't do. But I think too often in sports, we're trying to change young people. And this they are what they are by 25. Uh, yeah, but uh, this is the distinction. And, and I'm glad you brought up LeBron because I think that this is the, the uh, example, which is LeBron was, I don't think he was fully formed until he went to Miami. But, but it's, I think it's, they finished him. But he knew, he was aware that he needed something else. He was seeking to evolve. And the guys that don't, don't. are the guys <laughs> are not aware that they need to. So right? Draymond Green is a guy that literally from the day he showed up at Michigan State to the day he ended was a different person. Yes. To the day he showed up into the NBA to the day today. But I know Draymond. He is curious. Mm -hmm. He is a, I mean, he loves to learn but that's always been who he was. Right. Tom Izzo's like first day on. I'll give you that. So like I think people are either curious and yes. ascending and hungry yes. for information yes. and improvement, or they're just like, hey man, I'm getting paid. I love this life, and I'm like, I'm good yeah. with both. And that is a big thing with guys in the NBA. Yeah. It's and it's often said. It's like, do you play the game for the game, or do you play because of what the game can give you? That's right. It, and, by the way, it's same in the NFL. Like yeah. Trent Dilfer always said. You know, Tony Gonzalez, I once said, what percentage of players love football? Love it. He yeah. goes, 3%. Yeah. And that's okay. I think you get into trouble trying to fundamentally change Jordan Poole. I think he's just going to be kind of a young guy. He's a free spirit. And so when you start asking him to be mature and to, right. don't be reckless, okay, you're taking away a little bit of his artistry and a little bit of who he is. Yeah. And that's fundamentally who he is. Yeah. But I, but I believe that there is a way to contain that. I believe there's a way to extricate the good and minimize the bad. Now you're gonna, you're always gonna be juggling it and trying to find See, the perfect Buker, fit. Buker, this is why I don't get frustrated with people hmm. because I come to terms with who they are and I move off them quick. <laughs> Fair. Or into them quick. That's probably why we haven't had dinner. In a couple of weeks, <laughs> come I'm on. guessing. I, I... Okay. All right. <laughs> Bukes. I got Kidding. no problem. Embiid winning the MVP. Good. Okay. Because I voted for him. Okay. 
But I was told years ago that triple double is everything <laughs> of which I said, no, it's not. Or we talk about Oscar Robertson all the time. Yeah. If you want to give it to Westbrook because he got abandoned, give it yeah. to him. Yeah. But don't tell me the triple doubles everything because Jokic is a walking triple double and he got blown away in the voting. This is what troubles me. Is Did you ever vote for Jokic? I have never voted. That doesn't bother I've never me. put him at the top of my ballot. Okay. He's been on my ballot. Okay. I think he's been maybe even second a couple of times. He's never been right. at the top. This year was the closest that I got to putting him at the top. My great concern is that the reason Jokic didn't win, there were two reasons that are not necessarily good reasons. One is players across the league seem to be campaigning for Joel Embiid. No question. Right? <laughs> no question. And two, the stigma of Jokic winning it three years in a row. Yeah, Jordan didn't. Made, I, I said at the beginning of the year, I thought that voters were going, if they, they were just looking for a reason not to vote for Jokic. They just needed one. I'm going to throw this at you. And they you. found it. Let me support Embiid. Let me okay. pivot here. Is sports entertainment? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. First and foremost. If sports is entertainment, yes. Are movies entertainment? <laughs> yes. Yes. Do I think Top Gun was the greatest movie? Yes, because it entertained me the most. Yeah. Did it have the greatest acting, the greatest writing? No, but I thought Top Gun was a great movie because yeah. it made me feel something. Yeah. Same reason a lot of people vote for certain people that wear red hats. They make you feel something, yep. not necessarily think something. Feeling matters. Embiid is more entertaining. Sure. Jokic may have. Jokic is the film that the critics. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's efficiency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P E R. Yeah. Win share percentage. Triple double. But it's entertainment, and Embiid is way more entertaining to watch than Jokic. Yeah. And if it's close, is that a legitimate reason? If I was a voter to vote for Embiid, he's more fun to watch. And it's close anyway. No, it's not. It's not a legitimate reason. It's not a legitimate reason. It's entertainment. Okay. Yeah, but we're giving out an award. It's not. This is not the well, Oscars. You know, the, the Oscars is. You could argue is more esteemed. Uh, understood, esteemed, but it's still. <sighs> we're still talking about excellence. We're still talking about well, is it, is how it, you perform, not how the how, not how necessarily. You're you're defining it. You're defining success by how the audience reacts. Well, right? Th there's an aesthetic with pro basketball. But okay, I'll give you an example. I'll throw this out. Here, how about this? I'm going off the rails here. How about this? So I believe one of the reasons Nerf basketball was so popular as a kid. Yeah. Because if you were in my generation, Dr. J was the person to introduce you to pro basketball. Okay. And we were little kids and we couldn't palm the ball. Yep. But we could all palm a Nerf ball. Yeah. And all you of us that played that Nerf rim. ball. Yeah. Everybody that played Nerf ball that's my age. Yeah. We were all pretending to be Dr. J. Yeah. Dr. J was my favorite player. Dr. J sold more Nerf basketball than anybody realized. And so the point was, was Dr. J dependable at the jumper? No. Free throw line? No. Defensively? No. You could not take your eyes off Dr. J. And that's why he was so valuable to the league. By the way, Embiid just won most valuable. Embiid's more valuable to this league. Yes, but the value is supposed to be his value to his team. Well, he's pretty valuable there too. Hey, well, but that should be first and foremost, not how you know how entertaining, how many seats he fills. Like, how like why don't we do? Then we should change the whole metric in terms of how we measure players. Like, how many how many season tickets do they sell? What's the attendance well, at their games? Why did, what are their TV ratings? Why'd you vote? By for the him way, then? I just have to say, okay, I gotta I gotta pull the curtain back here. This is what cracks me up every time I get a text on what you want to talk about when I come on the show. Right. Because I take my time to answer what I'm going, like how I'm going to respond and what we're going to talk about. And I know in the back of my head, we're not getting to any of that. Who knows where we're going to go? <laughs> I would have been, I, w I would have been researching movies and Oscar awards, not freaking uh, Andrew Wiggins. Okay. So, so why? 
Did you vote Embiid MVP then? If you don't believe in my entertainment matters, he's more fun to watch. He's the Top Gun of movies. If it's close, give it to Top Gun. <laughs> so why did you vote for Embiid? Because, because I thought he was the most impactful player at both ends of the floor and made his team better than the sum of its parts based on the supporting cast that he had. Okay, that's I thought that the, the, the tell on Jokic was how much better they were because Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray were there as opposed to what they were previously. Okay. I know you're all upset because I'm not asking you the pre-written No, questions. no, no, this no, no. Not- I enjoy this. It's just, it's taxing. I'm exhausted when I get off of this hey, show because hey. I never know where we're going to go. You know what? This is called America. I'm going to start bringing a machete broker. with me because I just got to like, <laughs> hey, this, where are we going? This ain't Stephen Colbert. We don't script anything. <laughs> I've, okay. So, clearly. So a couple days ago, we did the seven wonders of the NBA. Yes. You, were a, you got off a UFO. Yes. You'd never seen basketball. And I, you said to me, explain basketball. Mm. What does it look like? How beautiful is it? Mm. And I said, I'm going to give you seven players. Mm-hmm. And they perfectly describe basketball. They're all different, unique, but all amazing. And I went Kareem, Jordan, LeBron, Steph, Magic, Bird, Shaq. And you would replace who with who? I would replace Shaq with Wilt. I just don't see any way that you can't have Will Chamberlain in that mix. And you just brought up another name. I don't know who you would replace, but Dr. J. The influence that he had. Uh, you know what? I may have left that one off. Yeah. Dr. J introduced me to basketball. I'm a kid in rural Washington. Yeah. And I like a guy for the Philadelphia 76ers that just moved from the ABA. And I couldn't care less. I can remember Steve Mix, Caldwell Jones, Bobby Jones. They literally, if you could have Mo Cheeks. bought merchandise, Mo Cheeks, I would have bought all Sixer stuff. And it yeah. was Dr. J. Yeah. Yeah. That's, not, that's a good point. Dr. J, arguably over Shaq or Wilt. Boy, that's tough. I, I, I mean, they changed the lane because of Wilt. Yeah. So it's a good point. All right, let me ask you another one of these pre-written questions. No, 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 no. Keep going off the. Tr- go on. wherever you want to go. <laughs> okay. One more. Does it bother you at all that Sham Sharanya not only reported? Memphis is moving off Dylan Brooks, but the wording yes. was so punitive. It's yes. like, we don't want anything to do with this yes. bum. Yes. Did that bother you? A uh, 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 thousand percent. By the way, you, you should stay unscripted. Your scripted is terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, because it, it suggested that the Memphis Grizzlies are not culpable. Like, oh, God, we, like, look what Dylan Brooks did to us. He is not part of us. He is not who we are. Yes, he is. You created Dylan Brooks. That's You're cool. responsible. And I, this goes for even guys who are drafted high, and then he's a, he's a bust. It's like you, you scouted him. You decided to pick him that high. He doesn't fit. He doesn't work. And it's all his fault? No. The team, the responsibility on the team is always there. I, I, I never thought I'd get to the point where I feel bad for Dylan Brooks. I feel bad for Dylan Brooks. They kind right of fed now. him. They, 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 they did pushed they, him. At, it, at any point, did they ever pull back on him? And I was around that team this year. The players ran it. And you can look at it. At John Moran is another example. Like John Moran literally said after the series, I have to be more disciplined on and off the court. John Morant had to come to that conclusion on his own? Like, the, the, the Grizzlies didn't send that message after the first incident? I, that's the part where I, I just, and I, look, you have a very young first-time head coach. Yeah. You have a relatively inexperienced, as far as the NBA is concerned, GM. Yeah. Uh, you don't have any veterans in the locker room. Like, there, it's a young organization, and it operates like a young organization. And I can't put all that on Dylan Brooks. So, I'm not. You're good off the script. You're not as good scripted. I think I like what I'm hearing. Okay. 
Really, I really liked where you went there. You had a lot of, <laughs> lot of, you were a live wire. So, do you guys want me to go to a this break? This is facetious, Colin. Right no, now, no, I liked it a lot. Is. You're very okay. good at dinner. You, unfortunately, he doesn't drink. So I go out and have a cocktail. I am loose and lubricated, and Rick's out there. You know what? Giving me, you know, you know. If that's loose and lubricated, Colin Cowherd. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we got to work on that. <laughs>